Greetings citizens of the internet. I've received one tutti bag today, but I am recording this rather than leaving it till later because I know what's in it and it's one that I'm quite pleased to receive. How do I know what's in it even though I haven't opened it yet? Well, because the sender, let's say Discord vendor, um, put a packing slip in a document wallet envelope on the outside. Very old school. So I can see what it was. So really all I need to open it up for is to see what condition it's in and then to enjoy having the thing. There we go. <clears throat> no. It's wrapped it in cardboard. It's very good. <clears throat> This is something that I've owned as a digital download for a long time uh, and the physical copies are quite hard to come by. It is The Quiet Earth by John Charles. There is a very short LP of it, um, but this CD version is also paired with the soundtrack from a TV series called Iris. Uh, what is that? A made for television feature about the life of New Zealand writer Iris Wilkinson. But anyway, it's The Quiet Earth that I bought it for. It's a glorious soundtrack uh, for a very weird film. Um, the finale track called Saturn Rising is a, is a standard. Um, I shall stick a link to a YouTube clip of it. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's well worth checking out and going, huh? But uh, yeah, well, let's let's see what can do. Nice brown design, isn't that mm, stylish? Uh, yeah, disc looks to be in very good nick. Oh look, it's me reflected in this thing. Reflection and reflection and reflection. Yeah, so there we are. Good oh. Uh, see if there's anything else. Yeah, we'll we'll cut to an edit and there'll be something else in another couple of days, I'm sure. It's Thursday. Just come home from work and there are two more small packages. <clears throat> this one. It's the Netherlands. I've had things from the Netherlands before recently, haven't I? So let's see what this one is. Oh yes, okay, this is Richard Stone's pumpkin head. I heard discussion about that and thought I'd give it a go. Uh, and then this other one is in the slimmest little um, bit of brown paper. It feels like it's a digipack and therefore not at too much risk of um, knackered jewel case syndrome. So let us see what this one is. Nice bits of invisible tape on it. <coughs> oh yes. BBC Nature documentary um, soundtracks. I have got Fenton's Blue Planet along with uh, Nicholas Hooper's Andes to Africa and Sarah, no, and he's, yeah, something like that. Um, Sarah Class is Africa. Uh, Elizabeth Parker's Living Planet, which was back in the early 80s, all the way back to the first of Attenborough's big series, which was Life on Earth, which was Edward Williams in the 70s. Nice trunk records CD release for that. Um, listening on to, um, Cinematic Sound Radio's interview with William Welch, where they, he was talking about the, the George Fenton score, I realised that um, I haven't actually got... I mean, they were saying that Blue Planet 2 with <clears throat> Mr Zimmer is possibly not quite as good, but it's still going to be fairly good. And I hadn't got that one. Amongst a lot of um, wildlife documentary scores that I have got, you know, aside from the BBC ones, there's also 
Um, Birds do it, bees do it, which I think was Gerald Freed, possibly. Um, and things like Untamed Romania by Nanita Desai. Uh, and all those kind of stuff. So I, I thought I'd get Zimmer's Blue Planet 2, or Zimmer and Jacob Shea and David Fleming. So, that's that. It's, what is that? So that's... Booklet jammed into the front panel, CD in the back panel. It's got a gobby of glue stuck to it. That only scraping off before I try and play that, I think. Anyway, so that's today's um, Pumpkin Head and Blue Planet 2. Any more? Any more will need to be Friday because I'm away for the weekend. And now it is Friday and it was possibly worth holding off because there are two more packages. This first one in the Jiffy Bag appears to have come from Italy. The packing slip. Will the packing slip tell me in advance of opening it up what it is? Beyond the fact that it is a music CD, no. <clears throat> so, take a slice of doom it is then. Get me down the side of there. Aha! Again, this is something that I already had as a dodgy download and I wanted to upgrade to a legit copy. It is The Odyssey by Eduard Artemyev, Russian composer. Started off doing electronic scores, sort of for Tarkovsky movies and things like that. Uh, but then moved on into, into orchestral stuff. Um, yeah, so... This the Odyssey. Let's see what the name of the label that that is on. Electroshock Records. Glad to get hold of that. I do like Artemiev. <clears throat> and then the other one is a box, and this has come from Shrewsbury, or Shrewsbury, or Shrewsbury. Take up the sides. And there's one force one's way into this. It's a bit hard to see where the top and the bottom are. Sod it, I shall just tear the damn thing. There we are. Right, what I have here is a very Saraband uh, Elmer Bernstein's film music collection, John Wayne Volume 2. I'd already got Volume 1, which had got the Comancheros and something else in it. Um, True Grit, I think. Common Cherries and True Grit. And this volume two, which has got the shootiest, Big Jake, and Carhill, United States Marshal. So that's that. And the other one that goes with it is John Scott's The Second Jungle Book. John Scott is always good. This is on his self published label, Joss Records. Got a few of those. A booklet with info about the film in it. Yeah. So there we are. Scott. Bernstein. Artemiev.
Well again folks, it's now the evening of Tuesday the 15th of November. I've been away for one of my long weekends in Kent. And that means two things. Firstly, have I bought anything in the record shops there while I was away? Yes. And secondly, has anything turned up for me in the post while I was away? So let's have a look at the former. Uh, in a record shop I picked up a copy of uh, Rizzo Tavani's Mondo Carne on CD. I had already got this on a hooky digital download so it was nice to upgrade it to a real thing. It's in trifold. Um, Uh, did you pack? And that cost me 12 quid, so standard price for a CD, really. Um, but there was also a record fair on in Whitstable. So I had to wander around the record fair in Whitstable. Uh, and I picked up a Varese. I picked up Sheena by Richard Hartley. Um, and then I was talking recently about um, BBC Wildlife documentary scores, George Fenton and Stephen Price and Elizabeth Parker and Edward Williams and all these people and Hans Zimmer and so on. Um, I discovered one in this record fair that I was not familiar with. Earth, One Amazing Day. You see that's by Alex Heffes. It's gatefold sleeve, it's a uh, double LP, printed in the sleeves, nice uh, cute handy mule there, uh, and the first LP is on blue. The second one, penguins, is on a sort of greeny turquoisey sort of sea green colour. Uh, yeah, I was not aware of that before at all. Um, and they were getting rid of copies of that for a tenner. So uh, that was not bad. And the Sheena was, I think, seven pounds. And then when I came back, there was this sort of pile. So go through this. This one has come from Salisbury. This has come from Salisbury. Oh yes, something else that I'd already got digitally and I wasn't aware there had been a uh, CD of, and this is again another nature documentary, not a BBC one though, uh, and that's Nanita Desai's uh, Untamed Romania. Um, it's a co-release between Silver Screen uh, and a Romanian label, Alshan Retail. I'm guessing on the pronunciation of that. That's nice to have that. It was a good score, so I'm glad to get it on physical media. So, this has come, this has come from, well it's certainly come from the US, Intrada. So we'll slice there and there. Across the top, what have I ordered from Intrada? I have no recollection. chips wrap of bubble it is base the future um, after Ian's discussion I was aware that actually for the original film I've only got the vinyl, the original LP with all the songs and only two tracks of Alan Silvestri. Um, 
The super expanded version is uh, is out of my price range, but this one, this one was all right. That's got 24 tracks. Yeah, that'll do me fine. Um, and along with it, I thought I'd buy some Bruno Nicolai. Bruno Nicolai is good. Uh, I've got various versions of Dracula by various people over the years. So I thought I'd get this one. Yeah, so there we are. And uh, rubber band. And something in a big squishy cushion pack. So who sends things in very, very well packaged squishy bags? Those of you who are regular soundtrack purchasers will know who does that. And frankly, you're all regular soundtrack purchasers. Nobody's going to be watching this other than soundtrack purchasers, are they? Bubble wrap, bubble wrap, rah, rah, rah. What have I got? I've got Nathan Johnson's Looper. I've got Ashley Everson's Hansel and Gretel. Ah. Uh, and perhaps more importantly, I've got Michael Kamen's Die Hard, which was on special offer, um, down from, I think it's usually something like $39, and it was down to $25, um, which for triple disc, I'm happy with. That's a good deal. And then this one has come from Germany in Deutsche Post but it isn't a German recording or is this German thing it's an Italian thing It's a doppia faccia, whatever that means, by Nora Orlandi. That's on a record label called Four Flies. Comes with a plastic sleeve, which is nice. Let's have a look. Very shiny sleeve. But the inner one is plain black. It's quite a hefty card on that sleeve. Plain black. Nice black. Original style black vinyl. Uh, and the inner sleeve has got the uh, plastic film in it. So that'll be worth keeping it in. I won't have to switch it out to, a, to an anti-static one. Yeah, nice to have that. So there we are. That's my acquisitions for the weekend. Gosh, that's quite difficult to get back. You know what? That's what these plastic wallets are for. Let's not try and put the disc back in the original sleeve. Let's slot it down the back. Oh, that'll do fine. Nora Landy. Phew! Hello again. It's now Wednesday the 16th. I've had two items in the post. I've already unboxed them, so here they are. But these are both examples of it's important to proofread stuff. 
Uh, here we have uh, a thing by Frederick Talgorn. Uh, it's got a French title, Le Brasier, which is not to do with bras. Um, it doesn't appear to have, I, I looked it up on IMDb, it doesn't appear to have an English language title, um, but Le Brasier translates as The Brazier, hence all these hot coals, I suppose. Um, you might say, well, what's, what's the proofreading problem? Well, if we open it up, we'll see that on the disc inside, it says that the composer's name is Frederick Targorn with an R. I'm sure he was pleased when he got his copy of this to see they'd spelled his name wrong. Lovely. Uh, and that's on, that's on Alhambra. So people at Alhambra get a slap. And the other one is this thing here, which is, um, you can see the, the high quality typography there in, in Times Bold. Eye of the Panther, music composed and conducted by John Debney. And then on the back it tells you actually it's two things, one of which is Eye of the Panther and one of which is not since Casanova. I had not heard of Eye of the Panther, so I again went on IMDb and looked it up. I couldn't find it. I scratched my head a bit and looked it up under John Debney and couldn't find it. Uh, it said it was a thing by... Shelley Ducat uh, looked it up under her name and I couldn't find it. Um, lots of twiddling around. I eventually did find it and the reason I've been having trouble is because it isn't called Eye of the Panther at all. It's called The Eyes of the Panther. So with a the and with, an, uh, with a plural s. So it's just like that's not what it's called. Um, in addition to which it's not a full film. It's just a one hour um, special uh, on a TV series um, but there we are so this is this is early John Debney uh, these two turn out to be from 1988 and 1989 so it'll be interesting to see what those are like in the meantime I'm sure you have all been eagerly waiting on tenterhooks to discover the answer to my quiz which was about uh, who would be next in my run through of collections based on largest quantity of recordings in my collection? I'd gone through Goldsmith and Williams and Zimmer and Horner and Bernstein and Morricone, uh, and possibly one or two others who I can't remember now. Um, but I was asking you to estimate. Who might be next? There were a number of very good guesses in the comments under the last video, which included Miklos Roja, Bernard Herman, Michael Kamen, Basil Polidoris, Maurice Jarre, and Lalo Schifrin. Uh, the correct answer is none of those. It's actually that fellow who glides under the radar a lot of the time. Man with three names. James, Newton, Howard. So look forward to that one in coming days. In the meantime, I think I'll edit all these bits together, call it done and put it out. So till then, stay fresh, cheese bags. <laughs>